should I listen to? No, no one's you gonna... don't. Because it's lo-fi's background music. Yeah, we've I, had this conversation. Yeah, before. that's fair. But I'm saying, I'm saying, those kinds of people who listen to lo-fi music and that's their favorite genre, and they wouldn't want to recommend that's no it. one. <laughs> no, that's nobody's no favorite one. genre is they're like, yo, check they this might song out. Think and they it's pull their up the favorite screen. genre, but it's not. It's it used absolutely to be my favorite not. genre. Actually, it still probably is my favorite. No, genre. <laughs> your favorite genre is the samples that they're using from <laughs> okay. from whatever original shit they're taking. All right, yeah, from. fair. So that means I just like a lot of weird shit from the seventies and sixties before time. <laughs> before time, if someone recommended me a lo-fi song, I wouldn't listen to it. I'd be like, no. <laughs> Not that lo-fi is bad or anything, but like it's it's such a background genre that I wouldn't really want to just sit down and listen to it. Yeah, you know, because I couldn't I couldn't develop any thoughts about it. I'd be like, yeah, that was chill, and I could say yeah. that about literally any <laughs> that song. <was> chill. <laughs> it's also like a lot of um, so many lo-fi hip hop artists reuse a lot of the same yeah, uh, samples. So and a lot of so, them are so boring. So many of the songs sound exactly the same. Um, if not shifted around a little bit with like a different hi hat or some shit, you it's, know what I mean. It's one of those genres where that I feel like that the music itself is so easy to just manufacture you and just shit pump it out. out. Yeah. yeah, you could literally you have to dig through miles of shit in order to find anything, and that you just you get a nice melody, you fucking get an easy like 808 or something, and then like a hi hat, yeah, <laughs> and then you yeah. have a lo fi, song. like the absolute <laughs> chill domain of my on my Spotify, which is still like the crowning accomplishment of anything I've ever made. Uh, <laughs> kind of still sad. listen to it, <laughs> I was but, about to say. <laughs> but yeah, like that took me like fucking four years of like straight up listening to lo fi multiple <laughs> hours a month. You're sweating, yeah, like I'm writing like down going, notes, going through random lo fi songs, that, it's just like it takes so fucking long to find anything worthwhile. That must be a mental illness. There's no <laughs> other way. <laughs> it's hyperfixation. <laughs> I guess so. Yeah, that's a little ADHD or autism brain. But who is it a little autism You've been trying to sell autism brain. on me a lot lately. Yeah, I, I, I've, been, I've been subliminally <laughs> pushing it on you. You're gaslighting Alex into autism. Autistic. I'm gaslighting. <laughs> <laughs> I'm making him think he is. Jesus. <laughs> but there's nothing wrong with that. Yeah, I no. might be a little autistic. And so be it. I have ADHD. Some people argue that ADHD is on the autism spectrum. Probably. I mean, like, I've seen, like, people far down the spectrum. And, you know, they, they exhibit just, like, super extreme, uh, like, ADHD traits. It's just, it just be fucking human. God damn. What does that mean? <laughs> like, why? Just, like, we exist on a spectrum, so why we got to label it so hard? We're only, oh, we're no, only yeah. categorizing it for the extremes. Yeah. yeah. That's a good way to put it. Because, well, like, yeah. otherwise, wh what do you distinguish it? Because, like, everyone has autistic traits, mm -hmm. you know? Well, that's when it becomes, like... Like, when is it necessary to diagnose something? You know, yeah. it's only when yeah. it becomes a problem. You know, everybody might be on the spectrum or everybody might have some uh, ADHD tendencies, but only some specific people actually need to get, like, diagnosed with ADHD and get, like, medication or therapy or some other treatment for it. Yeah, we've changed the the ranges for what we consider to be, like, the, the old IQ levels where, like, you could be, like, a... Uh, Nimrod. I don't know what the, the categorizations were. <laughs> the technical term. Yeah, the t whatever the technical term. <laughs> the medical were. term. But like they have a whole separation, and those those numbers have changed so often, and like they're fucking bullshit because it's like you know you. Can well, IQ in general is bullshit. Yeah, it is. I don't know if it's bullshit, but it's not everything. Like it, it has some like like correlation to uh, certain success areas, but it also correlates he heavy with like people who have um what's it called really high economic standing tend to have a higher IQ you know what I mean so it's like and IQ is not static as well like it changes throughout your uh, life the problem with it mostly is because it it measures a static number when your intelligence isn't and also it doesn't encompass it doesn't encompass like the other areas of intelligence it's no. kind of just like a flat rate so yeah, someone could be really smart well, in like well. like spatial awareness or uh, just learning in general but someone else could be really uh, intelligent in like I don't know, fucking anything else. Any other, I, I don't remember what the actual categories yeah. of intelligence well, what are. What if we're talking about like physically gifted people too? It's like, you know. I mean physically gifted. Because in a, in a way, uh, moving, moving around is like a skill that you ultimately optimize. You know, oh, like, yeah. Uh, you, you learn specific things about how to swing a bat. Well, would you consider like athleticism and intelligence? 
Oh, uh, well, it's a facet of intelligence, I think. Yeah, that I was, your, I was, your ability to understand how you move and how to apply, uh, like just the the know how of your body. That would just be like because, decision making. Just because like IQ doesn't measure intelligence perfectly doesn't mean it's like useless. You mm-hmm. know what I mean? Yeah, no. Like it, it measures your ability for pattern recognition, um, and like uh. And some critical thinking aspects, you know what I mean? Like th- there's a variety of things that it measures, but it is heavily, it's highly focused in one specific area. And there are other things that we can measure like emotional intelligence or like spatial awareness or something like that. You know, like there are other uh, intelligence markers or aspects of intelligence, but it doesn't make IQ useless or like, um, or not descriptive of some sort of something you know i just what I mean? believe like it's too specific for how vast intelligence actually covers that we really shouldn't be using it as a descriptive term for anything i, I think if anything it's just over applied people yeah. people, people take, take it yeah they'll take iq yes it, uh, like 60s or like yeah. 80s illegal limit or you know, something like they will um they'll just over apply it to everything you know what i mean and that's the problem but it doesn't mean that iq in and of itself is like a flawed thing or a bad thing it's just that it's over applied and misused and yeah. that, that sort of thing i mean the the whole existence of that test is to test a very specific part of a yeah, person exactly. in the first place so it's like we we as humans are multi gifted, multi talented, yeah. multi faceted. Well, it so. wasn't originally designed to be just that specific section because our understanding of intelligence has grown greatly oh, since yeah. it was first enacted. But that's what I think the problem is: is originally it was used to be like an all encompassing thing. But we as we developed update. as a society, there's yeah. been no. It's just been like the standard, and it's like I don't think it it, it is really wage. Yeah, <laughs> I mean, yeah. What? <laughs> weird, what weird connection there what? weird connection but i guess yeah yeah the, the thing is, like with the minimum wage it's like it's created and then it's just no, not like updated properly it's just being used in yeah. a weird way like, yeah, outside in of time. its intended purpose sure. I wouldn't say it's outside of its, its intended purpose. It's not like the purpose, minimum wage is being over applied. <laughs> <laughs> I have too much minimum wage. <laughs> well, also you need to remember though is that like. In our capitalist society, our capitalist you know, society, they kind of uh, they heavily select for like one type of brain, where it's like a person who can like look pea at a brain, fucking people, no. tiny <laughs> robots, people who can like Ants. look at a spreadsheet like for eight hours a fucking day and like sit at an office chair as well. You know what I mean? Like these are the type of brains that society wants right and now. And if you so, can't like, do that, you're autistic. Yeah, you're autistic, <laughs> or you have ADHD, or you have this or that, or this or that. And it's not it's not even necessarily bad to diagnose those things or whatever, but it's like, um, we use that as too much of a marker. I feel like there are ways to incorporate, um, people who have those types of brains better in society to where they wouldn't have to, um, like get the diagnosis and everything. Like the whole idea of like, uh, climbing the, the career ladder, it's really fucked up too, because you have, you hire a bunch of people because they look good at their entry, entry level job. And then you deny all the people who look bad at that entry level job. But maybe those people that you just denied are good at upper level jobs. You know, like you force them to work their way through this like slog house, essentially, to get to a place where they can be honestly more effective than what well, you, you know. I, I, I think a big reason why companies generally do that is because like it's safer. if and not even necessarily that. Well, it, that is true. But also like the idea of being like. <clears throat> like let's say I work at a company for five years or something and it and I haven't gotten a promotion the whole time and then a position above me opens up and you know I did well in my position and then they just hire some fucking rando from outside instead of considering me for the position it's like that kind of sucks yeah you know it's like I have so much more experience here and I've you know built a rapport with the management and everything and then some other fucking dude just swoops in and takes it that like it yeah cuts. I don't know I still I enjoy the idea of sen- seniority in the workplace, but also it. I have mixed feelings, a lot of mixed feelings about yeah. seniority because there's a, lot, a bunch of fucking seniors who are literally just sitting there and riding it out. And that's, you, need like, to that's have a, you need to have a job other than managing to be able to actually do like the company that I work at now. Uh, our managers are great because not only do they do work, but they're also managing because managing as a job in general, unless you have like, 50 employees to manage really isn't that kind of uh, like a uh, like a high action job. You're basically just sitting at your desk, making sure other people do their job, which yeah. is like, like, how do you do that without being over manager from elementary school? <laughs> yeah, essentially. 
You're just saying, you're just walking around the office going, hmm, yep, he's working. And you go back to your desk. He sure is clicking. <laughs> there is like an aspect of it, like coordinating teams, you know, it, but it, yeah. it depends on the job and the position, you know, because sometimes management positions are heavily involved where all you're doing is management. You're coordinating these teams and you're making sure everyone's communicating and all that sort of shit. You know what I mean? And I'm not like, I'm not trying to suck the management staff's dick. They usually don't know what the fuck they're doing <laughs> and they usually do write it out and just like kind of sit on their ass most of the time. Um, but there are some good managers out there that I've had. Yeah, it's Shout just, out it's Lisa. really hard. <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, it, it kind of is hard to balance like a, the way the workplace is set up. So many things. Fuck it. I think there's not enough of focus on like the groundwork. It's always like in the seniority in general because like you you there's get a some manager weird power and then, dynamic happening inside the system that shouldn't be there. It's because there. What what I think it is is that there's too many seniority levels where there's like a there's like a CEO and then there's someone under him and then there's someone under him and then there there is like a a general manager and then there are sub managers and then there are people who actually do stuff and then there are supervisors in between there. My problem yeah. is that within that structure, then you have like the the social hierarchy, which is <laughs> yeah. fucked up too. Yeah, someone who's it's been like there for five you, years versus the corporate one. politics. Yeah, you literally like some dude just being an asshole to you is like well, you and I literally do the same fucking job, <laughs> like the same exact shit. Why are you giving me shit? Yeah, and also we're here to do a job. I just want to go home. Yeah, we both would just want to go home. Why are you starting beef with me at work? <laughs> we work at a Burger King. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome to another one, guys. I'm, like, I'm Anthony. I'm Zane. Speak <laughs> the fuck up, Zane. Speak up. Get that shit out of your mouth, boy. Speaking of Burger Tough King foot up. lettuce. <laughs> Anthony, you have something to talk about? I wanted to talk about feet this episode. <laughs> so. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Let me preface this. <laughs> Let me preface this. I don't have a foot fetish, okay? But I've never claimed but, but. <laughs> I've never claimed foot fetishism. And I would if I did, but I don't. Okay. However, <laughs> oh god. I've been in a, re a relationship for like the past five or so months or something. And um just shut stop howling like you're some fucking uh fake audience from a sitcom in the 90s. I'm okay? so oh, nervous for the way this is gonna go. <laughs> I'm just saying, okay. That I've gained an affinity for my partner's feet. Like I want to massage them. I'm not. I'm okay with sucking them. I'm not gonna like actively be like I want them in my mouth. I'm making but, like, a phone call. <laughs> have, you, <laughs> have you talked with them about this? <laughs> yeah, I have. Okay, because I was gonna I say coming their, out as a I foot guy on the podcast. I'm not coming out as a foot guy. <laughs> I've never done this with anybody else. Okay. That's the thing. Maybe you know, just they a this person. They have cute feet. <laughs> <laughs> um, it's a reality. It sounds, like you're, it sounds like you're in denial. <laughs> I'm not in denial. I'm not coping. I'm not in denial. It's no rule has zero exceptions. Okay? That's what I'll say. You can be as straight as you want. There's one guy whose dick you'll suck. Okay? Yeah. yeah. I'm you know, not a okay. foot fetishist. But there is at least one or maybe a couple pair of feet that I'll find cute. You know, All right? I respect. But the thing is, OK, so what you're what you're referencing is like my sexuality. So like in my case, I personally like I say that I'm straight, but like internally, I feel like I'm pansexual. I just don't really market myself as you're not homo romantic. Yeah. Well, yeah, I guess that's a good way to put it. Like I, I probably couldn't date a dude, but yeah. I would probably fuck a dude if I found him attractive. But the, it's the, easier. the dudes that I find attractive. <laughs> The dudes that I find attractive are so, so few and far between that it's yeah. really not worth saying that I'm pansexual. So I do market myself as straight. Market. But the thing is, but yeah, because like well, if I'm on Tinder or something, I'm not going to, you know, <laughs> no, I put it. guys I on because yeah. I'm like, I'm not realistically going you to date any of them. put guys on just in case because all of them swipe, swiping right on you ups your profile like for, like for the views yeah. maybe. <laughs> it does. <laughs> Bring up that positivity rating. That's what I did. <laughs> True. Dude, yeah. boys, That's everybody do it in the audience. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, good Even point. Even if you're not, just swipe left on all of them. But uh, the point that I was making was like, I I say that I am pansexual when, really, when it really comes down to it. But mm -hmm. you're not saying that you have a foot fetish when it comes down to it because of the fact that you say that it's only yeah, one oh, foot no, that you I, like. <laughs> I would like to make the distinction here that, Anthony, you like feet. 
I you like have a foot fetish. No, 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 but no, no, you no, no. Like feet. I you like can no longer. No, hang on. Stop <laughs> talking. I like a pair of feet. You could <laughs> potentially like feet. <laughs> I could potentially like multiple pairs of feet. Sure, I'll give you that. Yeah, but how how many Dude, feet is too feet. many feet before you say wow? <laughs> how, many, yeah, how, many, how many feet until you cross the foot fetish threshold? I would say like three. <laughs> is it an I would odd say number? three <laughs> yeah. pairs. Yeah, yeah. three an pairs an of feet, and then you're in pairs. Yeah. I thought you were like three <laughs> feet. <laughs> Yo, that foot is sexy as fuck. That foot. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, three pairs of feet, and then I think you're in the danger zone. <laughs> well, I'll keep that in mind. I got my one strike. I would, <laughs> I would, say, rules. <laughs> I would say even three feet in general is pushing it. <laughs> <laughs> I got two strikes, man. Fuck. Wait a second. <laughs> well, not three individual feet. Oh, like well, three pairs. You said. You said well, three, well, you said three, three feet. feet. Uh, three feet. I'm assuming that we're keeping the feet together. <laughs> How most did we people get confused when we were all on the same page? Three, three pairs <laughs> of feet. But when you say, fuck it, it's like when I say Full feet, feet, I'm not talking about an individ individual foot because most people's feet aren't any different from the other foot. When you say feet, it's referring to plural of the one. You right. would know, foot guy. <laughs> Shut the fuck up, you piece of shit. I'm not a foot guy. <laughs> so what do you like about him? <laughs> I didn't know what came out from this. They're just cute. I don't know. They're like... What's your favorite toe? <laughs> I don't think about it like that, okay? Oh, okay. I'm not on that level. <laughs> They're just nice. I like to touch them. <laughs> I've never put them on my dick, and I don't like foot jobs or anything like that. That's why I don't. Have think you I, tried? No. But are, are you gonna want? No. What I think you, that's gross. What if you both had like a nice little foot bath? Well, that's just enjoying we a were, nice time. If we were in the bath, then maybe. Okay. Maybe. But at that point, I just fucking I'm, bring I'm just them. Helping you realize your. Well, I'm just saying, I'd rather something else on my dick than their feet. That's what I'm saying. Okay. Well, like, I wouldn't massage my partner's feet, but I wouldn't really think about it too much. I wouldn't be like, yeah, I'm touching feet right now. I'm not thinking about it like that. I'm thinking about, like, I like pleasuring them through this because they are, they're on their feet all day. They work at, like, a, a fucking retail store. Yeah. So it's like, it feels, it's like a good thing that I'm doing for them. So it feels good for me. And it's, like, pleasurable for them, like, Physically, so yeah. it's also nice. I'm telling you, it's mutually not a assured thing. pleasure. <laughs> yeah. The way like, you made it every, seem <laughs> sounds like you have like an actual like you're you like. Can were I kidding? You were projecting. You every said you had foot, enough. You, you said you had are, enough affinity sorry, for it. But every for one pair. <laughs> <laughs> That's it's one pair. But it's like if I was like <laughs> I love eating my partner's shit, but only <laughs> but only my partner's shit. Wouldn't that seem a little suspicious? <laughs> one log. <laughs> <laughs> one log <laughs> yeah but wouldn't that seem suspicious you'd be like hmm cause like if you're okay it, touching someone's feet is not a big deal but the way that you're I talking like about it made it suspicious I feel like taking a shit is maybe I could compare it to like uh, like farting or something like oh they farted the other day and I got an instant throbbing <laughs> fucking cock like maybe that okay. and then, then I could like see it's like on the C tier of fetish yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's like right on the same level as feet what is the rating? Yeah, what are you, what are you ranking it? <laughs> yeah, what are you ranking them on? Like, S tier. What is S tier? I, oh. The most fucked up? <laughs> I think, I think, like, it's just S tier would be. He's thinking. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe these are my fetishes. <laughs> Am I into feet? <laughs> <laughs> feet is an S tier fetish. I fuck with feet heavy. No, I just put it at C tier. Oh. So I mean, I she's like mid. Yeah, I, you're feet like pretty mid. I'm pretty indifferent to feet, I guess. Okay, I hate enough. this conversation. <laughs> where would you rank feet on your fetish tier list? I I don't know where I would rate it. One because I don't really know what the scale is. It's your scale. What it like? But just, it's like, my go, scale. Let's okay. Go. S B C D F. S tier is what you're most into. F is what you're least into. 
I mean, I I would put it in F, but I wouldn't. Whoa! But the thing is, like, it, I, it's not because it grosses me out to the point where I can't even touch feet, but it's just like I don't really have sexual attraction. I think feet. I think F is when it grosses you out. Yeah. OK, like, so I would F say is where C I would then. Play shit or piss. Yeah. Yeah. F yeah. is like, do not fuck around. Yeah, here. I would. I would put that in there. But then uh, feet is like C, like I am completely indifferent. Farting? Also hey. F. <laughs> hey. I, that's something that I don't like too. It kind of just as like a pet peeve. Like I don't like when people fart in general. I mean, obviously it's oh, like okay. a natural body thing. Same thing with burping where it's like, I don't care if you do it, but like, I don't want to be around you when you do it. You know, so, I'm not going to judge you for it, but I don't want to be. I really am not in the area. Dutch oven. I fart around Sydney all the time. <laughs> that's okay. But as long as you're. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, if you're living together or if you guys are like really yeah. close, it doesn't really matter. But in general, it's just something that kind of grosses me out. Mm. You should get over it. <laughs> I, I mean, I, I've come to terms with it. Into it. <laughs> you, you, you should get into it. it. You should get into it. It's like a B. <laughs> <laughs> I don't mind it. How did you come up with this revelation? Um, well, yeah, how shocked were you when this thought hit you? <laughs> Watch out. This, oh. is, this spits. Oh, shit. I'm talking oh. about the vape. Um... <laughs> I was just touching their feet and I was like, damn, I do like this. <laughs> and I was like, did you like the just touching it, them? Because like, it might not even be a fetish. It might just be like you enjoy the sensation of feet. The way you brought it up made it seem like it was like a, an awakening of a fetish. But it <laughs> seems like we're on the same page where it's just like you're getting mutual pleasure from yeah. massaging somebody, which in general yeah, is you're just, just yeah, being empathetic to your yeah. partner. <laughs> Anthony sure. discovers empathy. Do I have a <laughs> fetish? <laughs> <laughs> I didn't bring this up as anything. Yeah, I said something about feet, and you guys were like, "Uh oh, is he coming out as a foot fetishist? Does he like foot jobs? Does he want to fucking come all over my feet now?" Yeah, <laughs> like, <laughs> but I put these on. I'm curious. <laughs> I'm scared. The answer is no to all of those. It's such a, like a man brain thing to like oh, empathy, and it's like, am I am I attracted to this? <laughs> Actually, yeah, kind of true. Because it's like anytime like a woman shows you like, like gives you a compliment, or, kind, yeah, like, oh, oh, I love you. Oh, I can, I'm imagining the rest of my life with you. Yeah, <laughs> women do that a lot too, though. Everybody yeah. does that. I guess we're just lonely. I want a fan yeah. club. <laughs> a There's fan club. Alex is thinking. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> you don't remember what you said two seconds because a fan club is gross. I don't like a fan club. Yeah. <laughs> like. You're retracting the statement. Yeah, I, I re <laughs> <laughs> sucked it out of the air. There's like the whole thing with guys uh, talking about how like the, the one compliment that they got like five years ago is yeah. still in their head. I forget every word said to me in a matter of fun. You forget <laughs> what you just said. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You forget words that you say to other people. <laughs> yeah, I, I don't know. I, I feel like if it wasn't really me thinking that there was like an awakening of a fetish. It was more just, so just like, I kind of like this. Like I, I kind of, kind of like it's intimate. Yeah, Good for it's you. intimate. Yeah, you're discovering yourself. I would suck on toes. <laughs> okay, well that's different. <laughs> no, it's not. It's not the same. <laughs> Wait, hold up. Oh, yeah, hold on. <laughs> I don't want a foot job. I want to suck on toes. I feel like that's a fetish. That's what, that's <laughs> no that's way. definitely a distinct. The in mouth is fetish. Yes, <laughs> that is definitely a fetish. Okay. I think I think you were at the line and then you okay. Wait, it. what yeah. if I put other parts of my uh, partner's you gonna, you gonna body? No, like their, <laughs> no, <laughs> like what if I in put their, their ass, hand in my bad. mouth or like I bit their ass or something like that? You know, is that a fetish? Um, no, yeah. <laughs> no, I mean. <laughs> It wouldn't be a specific Arguably. fetish, but the thing is, like, feet are usually not the prettiest or the most clean. So, like, but if theirs are, <laughs> that's the thing. But that doesn't matter. You can have the cleanest ass in the world. You still have like a an ass fetish if you want to eat it. That's uh, okay. Okay, yeah, no. no I mean, like, I don't see it as a fetish though, because yeah, like, it's like when you're about to do anal, you still clean the ass. Like, is it's not like you're not into anal? If you like, dirty. if you like anal, does that mean you have an ass fetish? Yeah. I would consider I, that. I feel like a fetish is something that like you need to get off to. Well, then like, it's a kink. Yeah. Yeah, I guess it's one of those. You have a foot kink? <laughs> Fine. <laughs> okay. We got him. <laughs> Took a lot of gaslighting, but we're here. <laughs> 
This is I'm now leaving. my favorite episode. <laughs> All right, topic change up. So we're not <laughs> so we're not BMing Anthony anymore. The Saudi Arabian sponsorship. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> perfect. Perfect uh switch up. Kind of like in the same vein too. Yeah. How did we get that sponsorship? <laughs> Saudi Arabia just hit us up. They said we heard you like feet. <laughs> All right. By the way, we'll catch you after these ad reads. <laughs> so basically. Um, a f- a bunch of different streamers like Ms. Kiff, Emmy Roo, Tifu, Pokey Lols, like all, all a bunch of people. They got offered from like the Saudi Arabian government to come to Saudi Arabia for four days and play Fortnite. Oh, and like, oh, yeah, just, and like, on what? the lower end of the of like the payment spectrum for the sponsorship was a hundred k. Did they for come four back? Days. Well, <laughs> they. The the thing is, is that like when people announced it, there was a lot of uh, backlash from like other people. OK. And so like a lot of them like canceled it, like they fell back. Some of them didn't or like some of them, it's like up in the air. But uh, uh, a lot of them like canceled it because they didn't want to get canceled themselves. Um, but like it's they were go- they would be going for four days and like the lowest tier was like 100k and like Ms. Kiff I think said like he would be getting like a mill from it or My some God. shit like that wow four days of playing Fortnite in Saudi Arabia <laughs> basically people got mad because Saudi Arabia is like known for killing journalists and um doing war crimes and things like that which is pretty cool you know that's like a cool sponsorship yeah. you get sponsored by like Blackwater or something. <laughs> Sponsored by the CIA. <laughs> you're like talking about like socialism all day and you're like, this stream was brought to you by the CIA. <laughs> Better not happen in South America or I swear to fucking God. And those couple listeners from uh, Iran, I see you. What are they trying to promote? What is so- what is Saudi, yeah, Saudi Arabia think, gaining from this? If anything, just public image. What, just you know? playing Fortnite? Well, no, it's it's like public image of like having people come to your country, you know, big entertainers that they're trying to make the big hundreds, flip. hundreds of thousands of people, uh, you know, watch and like, yeah. like, you know what I mean? If they go to Saudi Arabia and they vlog about it and they play Fortnite and they have a good time and they promote it to their fans, then like, you know, it kind of changes the perception a little bit. I feel bit. like that would be more of a <laughs> more of like an ad for Fortnite rather than the country that they're playing Fortnite. I feel in. like that's bad for Fortnite to <laughs> fucking do shit in Saudi Arabia. Well, irregardless, actually, irregardless well, of the Fortnite country. Fortnite have control over, you know, like, no, you cannot host a tournament. Well, it's yeah. not a tournament. It's like a promotional it's, thing. Oh, just play the game. Just play yeah. Battle Royale for a couple hours. I feel like they probably uh, have rain over I that because it's, it's, it's their game. It's probably, it's a tournament, but it's not like a serious esports tournament. Okay. Because it's fucking like Ms. Kiffin. It's like some Twitch rivals shit. Yeah, yeah, exactly. I don't know. I, I definitely think it's weird. I don't know if I would ever accept like a sponsorship like that. I would that, not. That would be super weird. If um, I broke the although, one million mark, yeah. perhaps. Because it depends because like, Counter-Strike, they hosted, I'm pretty sure, multiple events in Dubai. You know what I mean? And, like, Dubai is pretty cool. I don't know if they got any money from the government to host it, which is, like, a different story. You know, like, if it, I, I guess if it was, like, a private company in Dubai that, like, uh, sponsored them, then I think it'd be a different story. But it's, like, the Saudi Arabian government that's doing it. Yeah, also, I'd like to say this, that if I ever, you know, if I personally ever accept, like, a, the Saudi Arabian sponsorship... <laughs> Just don't watch my content. I'm getting their money. Just fucking like I'm doing this for both of us. Yeah. Like just don't watch it. You know, don't support it if you don't support it. I'm just I you know, it's just a little transaction. Yeah, but it it's like there's a um I don't support it, it. I'm just taking their money. I am Well no, it's not it's not about to it's not about whether or not you support it. It's about you going to their country and promoting it by being there. And like by your like your presence alone. What like if I immediately just like start going to like the most fucked up shit of the place and just vlogging all that? Um, you'll probably get like executed or something. Yeah, shit. probably. Yeah, they're not too keen on journalists, <laughs> especially from America. Yo, you you'll get you'll just get sawed in half, you know. That's fine. What That's if I'm right. really good though? Or maybe a few. Yeah, <laughs> what if I'm really good at Fortnite? <laughs> yeah, what if I'm so good at Fortnite? <laughs> it's like, yo, you kind of snitched on us, but he's goaded <laughs> on the fucking sticks. So you take the sponsorship and then the <laughs> next stream back in America, you're like, it was dog shit. <laughs> <laughs> they fucking drone strike your house. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> They have like the fucking sights on the roof of your house <laughs> waiting for you to say some shit. Straight from Reykjavik. Nice. 
people in the chat are like, how was Saudi Arabia? You're sweating. You're like, <laughs> it was great. <laughs> I loved it. <sighs> I actually can't talk about that. <laughs> I feel like that's, I don't, it just boggles my mind that a country would do that. I would make the government. Well, like, how desperate NBA. are you for Middle Eastern countries do that a lot, like, with, um, uh, with other countries in the Middle East, like Iran and, um, I think the UAE, like, they, they promoted, like, a lot of propaganda in Iraq and stuff, like, to destabilize the country and to, like, promote their own image, like, to sort of, like, um, what's it called legitimize themselves in the eyes of people in the region and so like if you have celebrities like going to your country and like promoting your shit like it kind of makes people look it at makes you, you look more legit yeah <laughs> imagine going like being a uh, sponsor to go someplace and you just like you just give them the it's like yeah it's mid <laughs> this is most, the like, is mid. Yeah, it's okay <laughs> you what can't you kill me for saying it's mid like it's not bad i didn't say it was bad i said it was mid <laughs> In the contract, it specifies you're not allowed to call our country <laughs> mid. It's above average. <laughs> We're allowed to kill you if you do. The bag of bottomless mid. <laughs> <laughs> what is geopolitics turned into? Where people uh, hosting Fortnite tournaments is Dude, like... Zoomers taking over geopolitics. <laughs> Oh, the country. world will be ruled through Fortnite. Con <laughs> countries have TikTok accounts. One v one me right now, Iran. <laughs> so there was this. You probably saw this on Twitter. The kid from the Bronx. He's like a fucking oh uh, bodega bro. Yeah, bodega yes. Bro. What? He he's like this like himbo dude. He, like okay. he talks like this like and. He's from like Ohio or some shit, and he moved to Himbo's in Ohio. Hell are pretty yeah, common. <laughs> Logan Paul, Jake Paul, this guy, Bodega Bro. Yeah. Um, what's it called? And he uh, he moved to New York, specifically the Bronx, and he tried to find like a Kroger's or like a Myers or like a regular grocery store, but he I, he couldn't find one, quote unquote, and he could only find like bodegas, which are like small, like delis, you know, like little sandwich bodegas. shops. Yeah. And um and they have like groceries and stuff, but it, it's not like it's not like a giant eagle. You mm. know, you can't get like your weeks of groceries. There. Yeah, man, you can get like, like stuff from the day. Yeah, you'll have to visit multiple stores. You know what I mean? Um, and, and like <clears throat> they uh, and you know, he said this. It's like his first week in New York. It's a little dumb to say, but it's like it's not that crazy. You know, like especially if you if you've only grown up in suburban Ohio and you're used to like a giant eagle every fucking uh ten blocks or whatever, then it's like. You know, it's it's going to be a little different moving to New York, but like Twitter freaked the fuck out and like shitted all over him and like contacted like his job and shit. And I'm pretty oh sure God. he got fired like for too. all my fucking for, for like the whole thing. And it's like for what? For being for, lost? <laughs> for like for saying some ignorant shit about New York. You know oh. what I mean? I mean, the and, thing is, he's oops. he's stumbling on a problem that most people moving to New York from a place that d doesn't have these problems would stumble upon yeah. anyways. Like he wasn't I will admit, like his tone was pretty like pretty condescending mm. in the yeah, beginning. But the, he's a tw he's like a 20 year old fucking yeah. suburban white kid from Ohio. So it's like, no shit. He's not going to be like some thoughtful like he's like, where the fuck is the hiding? Yeah, bro. yeah, exactly. He, he's not going to say this is incredibly sad that there's a food desert in the middle of the yeah. largest populated city in America. It's like, no, he's a fucking gym bro who like pumps creatine into his veins every morning. Like he's not going to think about it like that. <laughs> like, where's the creed, yeah. bro? I can't find creed anywhere. And it's, it's like, I feel like it could have been a learning experience, but people just shit it on him, you know, it's and didn't, Twitter. didn't allow him. Yeah, I know. But it's like, it sucks. Did Elon ever buy out Twitter? No, no. he backed out. Okay. And then he lost like thirty six billion dollars. Just pussy. Yeah, what the? It it kind of sucks because he could have. I think that the journey that he was going on, you know, discovering these food deserts and then beginning to talk about them more, was something that brought a lot of attention to the food deserts in uh, New York to a lot of people that probably didn't even know that they existed, and it, it, people just took it immediately as like he was making fun of poor people or the people yeah. that live there in general, which <laughs> I don't think was the case. He was just lost as fuck. He's yeah. just some dude. And you could have said that it was like condescending or that he even was disrespectful to the people there because he was like filming them and like kind of being ignorant about it yeah. or whatever.
that doesn't mean that he should lose his job. You know yeah. what I mean? That doesn't mean that people should go after him and like dox him and like do all this yeah. other crazy shit. Just you know educate I mean? him. You yeah, know? exactly. Just fucking call him a moron and move on. You know what I mean? Like, I, I don't know why <laughs> people need to like ruminate on shit and like try and destroy people's lives over some dumb thing that they said. Yeah. I, I mean, we talked about this before, but that's the double edged sword of uh, cancel culture. It, it, it doesn't matter. As long as you're putting yourself out there, someone's going to find some shit. Yeah. I love Twitter. I love Twitter. I'm on it like 24 seven. Yeah, but me too. <laughs> there's a lot of people who, because there's I also like on Twitter. I, love, I Twitter. love it, but I hate it. Yeah. yeah. Cause when people post stuff, it's only an image of like who this person is. Like you don't know anything else about them. It's a literal snapshot into their lives. Yeah. Yeah. So with Bodega Bro posting, I think it was on TikTok or whatever. He's yeah. posting most of these stuff. And then it got reposted to Twitter. Mm-hmm. Um, but will. TikTok too is yeah, I think they went the crazy, same yeah. way. Yeah. TikTok is crazier than Twitter. Do we ever upload our shorts onto Twitter? Yes. Okay. Oh, on a Twitter? No. But yeah, yes. I, I just thought it was a little silly. And I feel like people were overreacting a fuck ton. We're all, there's a little bodega bro in all of us. Okay. We can all go to like some community and be like, what the fuck is even happening here? I don't even understand. There's a little himbo in all of us. Yeah. There is a little himbo and shibo in all of us. Shibo? <laughs> shibo. Isn't that just a bimbo? Or is that like, <laughs> it's racist. Is bimbo, what? Is, <laughs> what? Is bimbo, is bimbo, bimbo sexist? is like a gym bro, right? Bimbo thought, is not like a gym woman. You know? No, no, no. Bimbo, Him, like, himbo, himbo comes from a, bimbo. Yeah, yeah, true. Himbo. Is, uh, yeah, no, I guess you're right. It's not just a gym bro. It's just a not very smart man. Yeah, smart. Not a. It's a not very smart, attractive man. It's a dumb hot man. Yeah, yeah. dumb hot man. Yeah, true. Himbos and bimbos. But yeah, he is kind of a himbo because he's like, oh, 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 where the fuck am I? I can't get my hidings. Yeah. <laughs> I hate the way he holds the camera. That's someone I, I can shit on him yeah, for. He's like, he, hold, <laughs> he has his neck all the way back and his fucking phone like at his chin. I'm like, yeah, no wonder. Make fun of him for that. Like, I, <laughs> make fun of him for how he looks. <laughs> Something that he can't help. <laughs> <laughs> but don't go after his job. <laughs> Yeah, know. honestly though, the fucked up. Why do we keep? Go- why is it the first thing I hear about Twitter hunting someone? They just get his their job removed because it's people who have like it's like thirteen year olds who have like infinite amount of time and have been on the internet since they were born, so they know <laughs> how to use it. Yeah, and they just like stalk the fuck out of someone and figure out everything from them because it's like people don't realize their digital footprint that they have, you know, and, and like. You Google a name, you find a LinkedIn page, you already found their job, like whereabouts they live. You know what I mean? Like you found a lot of shit, you know, like a lot of the people that they know, you know, like it's it's so fucked. I think there's a lot of assuming go- that goes on like with what I was talking about earlier with everything just being at face value. Like people make assumptions about people a lot, which I think is fair to a point. But you have to be you have to be in understanding that that is just an assumption rather than something that is real. Yeah, we yeah. we project like this whole like the the idea of like the this whole person's personality based on like 30 seconds of a clip yeah. that you saw. It's it's like the same thing that you were saying earlier like how we just try to categorize everyone all the time. Like mm-hmm. cuz like cuz I uh, guess it's it's easier, it's simpler, it's well, no, quicker. It's it's not even it's not even those things. It's just it, it or it is easier. It's easier for you to like digest because you can just like assume any narrative you want yeah and it just like makes it easy for you to be like okay this fits my worldview now and like, it makes at, perfect sense to you too because yeah. it, you literally are able to come up with it on your own instantly like yeah. that and it's like just, look at the fucking, fucking the july 4th shooter uh incident thing like the guy which one well the the one that happened in um island the one parade or whatever okay um i think was it highland park and, you know, he's like this guy with rainbow hair and he makes hyper pop and he uh, but he, and like he does like other or like he dressed like a woman before the shooting. And then but he also like has like these Trump MAGA flags and pictures and shit. And then and there's like, going to be a ton but, of people in the comments who are like, yeah. saw that one coming. Yeah, exactly. It's like there's oh, fuck people. Off. Everyone on the left is saying, oh, obviously it was a white supremacist, white nationalist, whatever the fuck. And then everybody on the right is like, oh, he was a leftist, transgender, whatever the fuck. Like, it, it, it's just stupid. It's so stupid. Just stop 
assuming everything like everybody's like so geared to just like be like this is that and this is that and that's bad you know what i mean and so they just use it to like demonize well, everything else that surrounds those issues the thing is like we we can't assume that he's like a white supremacist or whatever but there's a lot of shooters that do support trump and it's been like a majority of them that have I'm happened in the past that, days. that it doesn't happen and uh, i'm not saying i'm just that, saying we can't rule yeah. that out no and I, i'm not saying don't rule it out i'm just saying don't assume based yeah. on two twitter screenshots and a fucking like <laughs> uh, uh like secondhand information from some other random twitter user yeah. that has like no proof behind what the fuck they're saying yeah a you know, screenshot of the jfk twitter account <laughs> talking about it yeah it's just so ridiculous like the shit that people say sometimes and also it's completely ignoring the issue that he killed like four people and yeah and Wounded also 28 or something too right I don't even know how much extremists necessarily they're geared towards Trump or whatever. It's just that like Trump is a vehicle for whatever fucked up beliefs they have. Like I, I don't know. I think yeah, he's, it, I think Trump he ended up kind of a scapegoat in this sense for them to already enact the things that they wanted to do. Yeah, I I feel like Trump didn't necessarily like. Trump didn't cause mass, yeah, he, mass shootings. He didn't I don't directly think. cause these yeah. things, but he's I part think of the problem that caused them for sure. Though I think he led a. It's kind of like for a January series 6 of six shit. He was absolutely yeah. Well, yeah that, that he had like a direct <laughs> well, cause. January but, six. Um, when people like fucking seized the Capitol. Oh, that was okay. Yeah. That day. The fact that all these mass shooters have like Trump flags, or they were Trump supporters, or like they were part of the Proud Boys, or whatever. It's oh, it's wow, like boy. these organizations and these people are giving them like the idea. It's they're solidifying their ideas that it's basically okay to do this stuff. They're not. They may not directly say that hey, it's okay to shoot people, even though it, that does come out a lot. There's a lot of quotes of these yeah. like leaders but, and stuff a lot doing of times that shit. But a, so not sizable, but like justified punishment for it either. A lot of times it it, it seems like the response is so weak that it it continues to encourage it to happen. I, yeah. I don't, I don't know. The people can be the people can be upset all they want, but it's just like I mean, like nothing has happened. We've had like several mass shootings this year. I mean, uh, there's been a lot of mass shootings, but like several really bad ones. We just have like a fundamental mental health problem paired with like a stochastic extremism problem from like the extremist rhetoric from everywhere, and then like the gun problem, the massive amount of guns in the country that just allows anyone to access them at any time. But like the what I wanted to say earlier. If there was like a mass shooter who had like one or two pictures with like a communist flag or like he was holding a communist manifesto, it's like would blamed you, all on that. Yeah, would yeah. you automatically be like, oh, he was a leftist shooter. He was inspired by the by the communist manifesto to do these things. You know what I mean? Like no, I, but- I feel like there's like people cast the net too wide sometimes when they're trying to say like where the extremism comes from. Because like, I don't know, that we just there's just so much information out there, like in terms of like where people are getting their news from, you know, it's not not everyone's getting their news from face or from uh, Trump. They're getting it from Facebook and yeah. Trump is taking advantage of that attention, uh, attention economy, quote unquote, and like just using that to like gain popularity and win political uh, power. You know what I mean? Because he's a fucking narcissist. So if you're trying to make a statement, make a manifesto. <laughs> That's what you gain from all of this. <laughs> I mean, ultimately, because like, you know, the assumptions, right? And so if you want to get rid of any assumptions oh, of what yeah. you're doing, you know, <laughs> you know make what? a manifesto. True. true. <laughs> yeah, actually true. I just feel like I, I agree that we're yeah, casting it. Don't be a mass shooter, but make a manifesto <laughs> of yourself. So that if you do we're taking do a mass shooting. <laughs> Well, yeah, because I, I, I mean, unironically, I feel like it would make more sense for people in general. The media wouldn't be able to skew it any sort of way because it would be like, this is what I believe in yeah. wholeheartedly. But people literally did that anyways. Who was the one like, shooter that wrote like a- the N-word on his gun uh, a while ago? Oh, uh, I, f- I forget. But I, I know. Was that there. the Ovalde shooter? Yeah, that's what it was. Okay. Um, but yeah, like that. And also the the New Zealand church. Yeah, there was a lot. I was going to yeah. mention that, too. There was a lot of those. Because like there's... um. You know, and like when they do write a manifesto, then obviously it's clear cut. You know what I mean? Um, There's a primary but, source. Yeah. But like, I think the stochastic force is like way bigger than just Trump and just like, yeah, I'm not the saying, or whatever. I'm yeah. not saying it's, I think it's right wing extremism that's yeah. causing a lot of these things because I agree that we're casting a net too far where we're, it's like one Trump flag in the background. We automatically assume white supremacists. Mm-hmm. But there's also, on the other hand, a pattern 
continuously happening over and over again where these people are racist. They are part of these white nationalist groups yeah. and they are people who voted for Trump. So it's like, at what point do we have to say like, this is directly causing this? You well, know? We're uh, maybe not directly, directly, but like you may be predisposed uh, <laughs> well, to something like, I don't know. I, I think it depends on the event in question, right? Because Mass if shootings. We're, if, well, no, because like what I'm saying is like, if we're talking about January 6th, that is very clearly like directly after a Trump speech, people walked to the fucking Capitol and started like breaking and, and entering and shit. Right. Versus, you know, a kid in his uh, late teens, early 20s. Here's a fuck ton of crazy shit about, you know, demonic leftist pedophiles or whatever on Facebook. And then Trump says something to kind of back it up. Right. Like Trump didn't really do the legwork there. He kind of it, maybe I'm maybe not saying it's him. over the edge. He pulled the trigger. And I'm not maybe? trying to. But I'm not trying to defend Trump. I feel like it comes off like I'm trying to defend Trump or like make him like he's not. Tri he's not doing. You're this. trying. He's obviously part of the problem. I just feel like people um, over. They demonize him for he, <laughs> because he's like kind of like the spokesperson for right wing extremism today, which isn't necessarily the case. I think he popularized a lot of it in like today's time. I don't but, think he popularized it. I think it was there and he took advantage of it. Yeah, because you, this well, is now like a the straw that broke the camel's back kind of scenario. Well, I think, I mean, it's always going to be there no matter what, but I think having him in power made it seem like it was such a, a more normal thing than it really should be. Well, here's the thing, right? It, it comes down to like the, like the fundamental idea of like, how do you change people's minds in society, right? And so like when you have a, like, let's think of racism. For as an example, when you shame people for being racist or whatever, um, it doesn't make them change their mind. It just makes them not be outwardly racist anymore. Yeah. You know what I mean? And like them not being outwardly racist doesn't even change their mind over time. It just makes it like more insidious and like more like deeply ingrained. Yeah, exactly. It festers. So like you have all these people who like, there are a ton of people who voted for Obama who switched over to Trump. Like are all those people racist? If one of those people committed a mass shooting, are they all of a sudden racist? You know what I, don't I mean? Think, like, yeah. I mean, I'm not saying that voting for Trump makes you racist, but I feel like there's a lot of things that lead up to that, that you would have to also believe in. Yeah, absolutely. But it's, it's shit. That's like, beyond what trump says sometimes and also you know if you I mean? think about it with backwards logic where that if you vote for trump that doesn't make you racist well then that immediately removes trump from the equation because it's this are you like the the actual question is are you racist right what i'm talking about is like the greater context i'm not talking about just trump i'm mm -hmm. talking about like right-wing extremism in general okay yeah. because like there is an obvious link to mass shooters and right-wing extremism and I feel like it would be uh, ignorant of us to just ignore that and say that it's just a net that's too wide. Yeah. So here, here's what I'll say. And you might disagree with me on this. When we call people like Kyle Rittenhouse a white supremacist, I think that's like it, it becomes stupid because like this is a kid who before all the shooting shit happened, before he took a picture with the Proud Boys or before whatever the fuck, he was literally just like cleaning spray paint on walls. He was talking about how he supports BLM. He's just there with a gun to like make sure that nothing like pops off or goes fucking crazy. You know, like he, and you could call him stupid because he's a fucking kid and he is stupid for doing that. Like I would never do that. I would never put myself in that situation or like, or get involved be, with the problem. Be the boys. hero. No, but also think about it like this. If you're a fucking 17 year old kid and you do something that you think is self-defense, right? And then the whole country uh, the left side of the country politically shits on you and calls you a white supremacist and a horrible person and a monster and says that you're faking your tears in court and says all this shit, then like, are you going to want to be like friends with them? Are you going to want to be involved with them politically? Like it, you can, and you can call them weak or like a coward for not sticking to left wing principles. But at the same time, it's like, he's we just a fucking, away. he's a kid and you're shunning him. Yeah. You know, you're shitting on him. And it's just like, it's not positive in any way to just be like, you're a Nazi. You're a no, white I mean, I like, agree. It doesn't do anything. I agree know? because, I mean, in general, he's, I don't think people realize that he's literally just like a teenager. He doesn't know what the fuck's going on. And when, when he's demonized by like the entirety of the media for, or not the media, but social media for doing something like this, it's like, it makes sense. Why little, he went towards people that accepted him, which were the proud boys. A little bit of the media, like the mainstream media too, kind of did that.
So when, when I talk about mass shootings, I don't mean to say that right wing extremism needs to be like shut out in general. I think we do need to kind of dampen it in some sort of way because the I discourse, agree. but I don't think the main problem with mass shootings, you know, politics in general, I think politics just give it a gateway to become much more common. I think mental health is the main issue there. But the, th the thing is, is that like everything is political in this instance right but i think like it the, comes i think but, the, pol the political aspect comes after well because you always you have to remember right why do we have a mental health crisis because politically we don't fund our fucking mental health institutions right why do we have a gun problem that allows all these mentally ill individuals to get their hands on guns you know it's because we have such lax lackadaisical laws I, I would agree that political extremism is like correlated heavily with like political violence or, or, or senseless violence yeah. or whatever you want to call it. You know, because there's a lot of people on the left that are like calling for action and everything for like kind of a revolution, which is like I get the sentiment for it, but I don't think it's like a good idea to do that. We would get fucking laser beamed. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I don't know. Every time people talk about revolutions, it feels like such a LARP. Like a LARP? Like, yeah. Because it's like. Like, I want to be like Karl Marx, overthrow the fucking U.S. government or like this, like I'm a patriotic, like whatever the fuck. Like, I, it's just stop imagining yourself to be the main character. Yeah, and exactly. then put yourself. The main component with that is that that is the only way out of here. When in reality, it's like, I think, so it, many I think you, you could do it. But the thing is, we don't have a plan in any sort also, of capacity here's to be able to enact what we want. Here's two paths, right? We can work within the system and like organize like with unions and political groups and like all these things and actually like get like a political left movement like actually yeah. off the ground and like moving um, in America because it doesn't really exist. It, is, it exists on the Internet, but it's it doesn't Bernie really Bernie Sanders exist. and yeah. AOC. Yeah, exactly. And then, that's that's, that's and then Twitter. Twitter. Uh, yeah, <laughs> basically. Yeah. But like the we need to get people in power that agree with us you yeah. know what i mean and the only way to do that is for like progressive people to vote and it's like so easy for you to actually get people in power for or i wouldn't say it's easy because obviously you have to like motivate certain people to vote but like if the once they're the in reason, power the reason why that no the reason why that i say it's easy is because there are so many fucking young people who can vote like the amount of like millennials i'm pretty sure outmatches or matches the number of boomers yeah. and like gen xers or something so like it literally if we all voted we could like turn the fucking country so far left like so goddamn quickly <laughs> it is insane so but we're losing because we're lazy yeah <laughs> I mean, yeah i know a lot of people that were like i'm just not gonna vote it's yeah, like no it, it, it happens i know i understand how demoralizing it is but that's just like that nihilism where you're like yeah. nothing's gonna change you and it's watch like everything bro, everywhere all at once yeah. and like, then go vote think about it like this like republicans since the 90s have been like electing people with the um what's it called with the intention of getting roe v wade overturned right they elected bush because he's gonna put up republic or like right-leaning judges on the court they elected other republicans for the same reason republicans always participate the fucking old All the ass, boomers have, yeah, have nothing else to do yeah, exactly old white boomers they're in every single election they're at every single school board meeting they're at every single thing and we wonder why there's so many right-leaning policies it's like these people are doing all the shit in the government you know they're the ones that are actually like complaining about shit there's like a know? dozen people in office right now from the silent generation yeah, yeah I, no, I know. <laughs> I, I would like to say that I, I do kind of understand the point that a lot of people who don't vote is that, you know, there's a it, to them, it feels like there's a lot more pressuring matters at hand. And, you know, you're you're overwhelmed with life. I get it. But also it's one day or like, yeah, it's literally one day. And like for most people, it takes like 30 minutes, maybe. Well, I think like, there's I kind of know. two avenues with that, because it's like you're either lazy and just don't you aren't invested in politics or, you or just don't care. yeah. Or you just like really see that there's no positive outcome yeah. because like most of the democratic presidents have been like super mundane within, yeah. within the left. There are the, the optimists and the nihilists, yeah. uh, which well, is that exists on both sides. Well, yeah, you of know, course. Nihilism is apolitical, yeah. but I, that I think we have such a warped perception as like young people or maybe it's a young perception or maybe it's something else. I don't know. Um, or maybe it's the fact that we have a close connection with Europe now uh, because of the internet, but we have such a um, close a, connection. All our esports fuse. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, we have the perception that like the president 
is what's going to is the person who's going to get things done. No. In in actuality, the like, president's the person who has the last say and hardly any input. Yeah, he like there are very limited powers that the president has that will change your life. You know what I mean? Like when if you go to the school board or you go to like a a community meeting, you know, like you could talk about the taxes that are in your local fucking uh, precinct or whatever you could talk about like the regulations of zoning like where do you where do we put new housing like there there are so many things that you could talk about and actually change in your life and in your community and it, and it can happen by voting in left-leaning politicians into those more local positions you know what i mean but left-leaning people don't show up for non-national elections yeah. you know left people left-leaning people show up every four years republicans show up every two years that's why right-leaning people get what they want more often than we'd want them to you know yeah. that's why people cry about it and they say voting doesn't work and and this and that but the reality is is that we don't vote you know yeah and that's there's the a lot thing. more elections than just the the national election that we oh, we yeah. don't even care yeah. about yeah I mean, I, I personally haven't voted in a local election ever. I've done it once. <laughs> the thing is, I'm saying this, I'm part of the problem. Yeah. You know what I mean? I mean, but recognizing like, that is the yeah, first step. Yeah, that's the thing. I, I'm on a journey. I want to join, like, join like a something. Recovering no, nihilist. Know. Yeah. I was yeah, definitely a nihilist. It, I feel like a, a big starting part was realizing that I actually am fucking young. Uh, yeah. I don't know. Just realizing that I'm gonna live to like fucking sixty it was a it was a good. Yeah, you have to set yourself up for the future. Yeah, foundation is always important, and like if you have a really fucked foundation politically, you at least at the very, at, at the very least, like think of how to change also, where you are. I struggle with like the idea of having kids because of like climate change and stuff. But part of me does want to be a father. You yeah, know, I, I, there there is a part of me that does. But I I think I have a responsibility as a father to be like somewhat politically engaged in order to like understand the events of my time that I'm living through and um, and even events that happened before me, you know, in my mom's time and my grandmother's time or whatever. And like to actually give them like a cohesive understanding of things rather than like my mom saying like Reagan was the best president, you know, like yeah. shit like that. Like I, I want there to be like a critical lens that my kid can see through yeah. versus like these one dimensional analyses of whatever the fuck. I'm tired of people being stupid as fuck. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, Welcome yeah. to America. <laughs> I could honestly take or leave being a dad, but really? like uh, the only thing is that, you know, like I wouldn't want to, you know, fuck, this punchline is so bad the longer I'm thinking about it. But, you know, like, I don't want to say to a kid, like, you know, we live in a society. You know? <laughs> it's like, I like I hate that. Yeah. Yeah. But also we do. Yeah. I, I want to I be like, we are a part of a society. Mm. We live in a society. I mean, yeah, that, I think the thing is, is that you as a father are there to guide your child like through to life interact you know what I mean? with fucking to, other human beings to interact with the world yeah you know what i mean so it's like if you come in and you're saying shit like just the dumbest political takes in the universe you know what i mean or like you're being nihilistic as shit mm -hmm. you know you're gonna set your kid up for fucking failure <laughs> that, that also ties into voting in general because it's yeah. like you can say that you want a world for your kid that's like nice to live in and everything but you also have to vote for it and also people like laugh at the idea that we live in a democracy we do live in a democracy. Voting gets shit done. Which we is just cool. don't do it. You know, it's not a perfect democracy. No democracy no. is perfect. But like it there are some good systems and some yeah. bad ones, you know. This has been the No Thought Podcast. <laughs> How <laughs> old democracy. Are those Cheez Its? Got a new box. How often do you get a new box? Uh this is my second box ever of off brand cheese nips. That's mm. too many. You're addicted. <laughs> I mean, they're not bad. Oh, whatever. What the fuck? <laughs> Do you have a cheese it fetish?